Winning the Delano Pearl Award for the 2013 round of France is Luciano Savarol. It's an all Hodges Walter Racing front row with Adrian Devereaux flanking him on the outside of row one. The major news item in the TM Master Cup series uh, for this week is that there will be a new qualifying format for the Cayala Grand Prix. It's basically the same system that's been used for some time, but there will not be a uh, final qualifying race, which, uh, frankly, having uh, a 42-car field with only 10 cars missing the cut, I think, is uh, ridiculous. This new format will see more cars time their way into the field, and fewer cars actually racing their way into the field, so we'll just have to wait and see how that turns out. Now, after the round of England, after Davina Hinton's shock victory, Greg Woodard in car number 41 was sent to the back of the field and docked 15 championship points for his collision in the pit lane with Adrian Devereaux. That's got to be a little disheartening for Woodard because he was very, very fast in practice and I believe he might have a good chance of making his way through the field today. And remember, last year Jose Luis Martinez and Juliana Silva started fairly deep in the field and finished first and second. Dan, off to you. Thank you, Lance. Luciano Savarol, car number three, leads this field of 40 to the green flag. His teammate and crowd favorite, Adrian Dever, on the outside. That blue, orange, and black car number one. Arto Kakinen and the silver and blue Gessler beginning to make a charge. Watch out for Kakinen, car number nine, as he dies on the inside of Adrian Devereaux. You'll notice that little dip in the outside of turn one there. A lot of drivers have been complaining about that, and a couple other corners on this racetrack saying that they need to be reprofiled just a little bit. The TM Master Cup Series is really the uh, one of the only major championships that visits this track. Of course, the Dash Cup Series is coming here as well. As you see Michael Sykes in the red five, have go off the track just a little bit in the background. Here's another look at that. As Sykes, see the Welshman, goes off just a bit. There was a huge ditch over in that runoff area last year. That's thankfully been cleared up as he almost wipes out Matthias Taub and Leonid Roderick. So uh, some uh, repair work on this course has uh, been uh, has been done, but of course uh, some drivers saying that a little more needs to be done. Anyways, Sykes he slides it slots into fifth place, and there's quite a bit of jostling further down through the field as well. So we'll have to go back and look at some of that. Here's Melanie Klebno, who started all the way back in row eight, uh, car number twelve. This is Lynx's home race, the French fashion company, as. Uh, Klebno in car number 12. Oh, Zelda Ashby in car number 11. In car number uh, 55 got hooked by the 11 car of Davina Henton, uh, the uh, round of England winner. Interestingly enough, Ashby and Henton made contact in the exact same place on the first lap of last year's race. So, a little deja vu there, perhaps. As Ashby gets into Craig Janser and Carlos Anzello uh, with a, maybe a little bit of help from Packer Carroll in car number 2. Uh, but we'll have to have another look at that. Uh, Donzello and Janser are both independent trophy cars. Now looking from Zelda Ashby from the overhead. As you see, Klebno makes a great move there. Could have forced that one, but of course everyone just kind of runs out of space and it looked like the 11 turned it turned out on the 55 just a little bit. Ashby, uh, that car is clearly having some handling problems and uh, we're going to have to see there is Ashby may just have kind of cut up into Packer Carroll and uh, that, uh, takes Janser and Donzello out uh, into the wall fairly early on. Adrian Devereaux, car number one, he really wants to win in front of his home crowd. We've known Devereaux to be very much a hard charger, but he's uh, played the thinking man's game in some races uh, previously, and uh, he might be thinking of doing that because Luciano Savarola has been quicker than him in uh, every single uh, session this weekend, so we'll have to wait and see and see if Devereaux has anything for Savarol, and it looks like he might in the early stages of this race. Looking further back in the field for Greg Woodard, car 41. Oh, that's some big contact! Chris Johans and one of the Katsivs, Kuznetsov. Yevgeny Kuznetsov in car number 8 rolls the Katsiv. And we're on board now with Greg Woodard, car number 41. We were uh, looking for him to see how much progress he made to the field. Oh, it's, he gets involved in this as well. Chris Johans and Yevgeny Kuznetsov. Just made a little bit of contact, and that was just a massive, massive collision uh, for the American and the Russian. Both drivers, okay? Greg Woodard's day ends early. Scott Stoidler runs Melanie Klevno into the grass. Klevno saves it and keeps it on track. As uh, she now takes the place from Scott Stoidler, who I don't even think saw that pass coming. But uh, massive collision for the other Manicor driver. Uh, but anyways, Klebno beginning to work her way through the field, and uh, this is the closest she's going to get to a home race. Of course, uh, Klebno from Geneva, Switzerland. Here's Troy Adams, last year's Steam Lights champion, has a bit of an off, comes back on the track, just clips, act up, and around he goes. 
So Adams in car number 18, uh, not exactly starting off this race the way he would like. He was running back in 26th as he begins to lose all sorts of positions as we go further back up to 7th where we find Mika Posinen in uh, Leonid Roderick's paint job from last year. Uh, the American Launch Energy Racing Team brought their third car to this race, got the promoter's option with Mika Posinen, last year's Cariola Grand Prix runner-up. He drove a couple races last year as well for the uh, Majestic Motorsports team in, uh, well, it was the 12 car over there, but he's in the 70 car today. He's uh, doing fairly well so far, running in 7th. Uh, he's going to be running around of Sweden as well. Felix Moore is in car number 94. He's an ex-German supercar driver. He ran four seasons in that series, and he finished uh, 13th place on uh, six different occasions. So um, Felix Moore having his first run in a Master Cup car, but oh, he's wide and he's off! And that's a big hit into the tires over there. So uh, uh, he's probably messed up the right front suspension on that car. Uh, Brian Sendak has been in this car uh, at Carbondale, most notably, where he performed very well. But Marr goes way off course into the tires. Uh, he didn't he didn't qualify very well, and he started and he uh, wasn't exactly making too much progress to the field. But um, an unfortunate early end for the German driver, as uh, yeah, he's clearly done a lot of damage to that car, and uh, that'll be an early end of the day for Marr. Benoit Vukle is making his first start for Tutino. He spun many times in practice and was eight tenths clear of uh, the next driver in front of him in qualifying. Of course, he started next to last. Carlos Donzello and Troy Adams coming on the inside of him. Adams makes a big move on the inside. Contact with Donzello and the 48 and off goes Benoit Vucle. That's the first of his spins this weekend. That hasn't really been his fault. But um, anyways, uh, that's a very unfortunate end for Vucle. He will be at the round of Sweden as well. Yulia Nosova won this race last year. She's running in ninth right now behind Gaspar D'Souza as Mika Posinen swings it out way wide. D'Souza trying to keep the seven car behind him. Gaspar D'Souza being very, very aggressive there with some of that defensive driving in car double zero. Very distinctive black and teal car. So anyways, Nosova trying to make a move on D'Souza as they come downhill to this uh, rather long straight. Nosova pulling on the inside. That car right behind her, though, is Jacques Bouvier, and Bouvier is going to try to make a try to make a move around the outside stick, and oh, he might just be able to make it move, make it work. Nasova's got to fend off a challenge, and yes, yes, Jacques Bouvier goes around Nasova around the outside. Good move by Bouvier to take advantage of Nasova's mistake, apparent mistake over there. As that's Chris Davenport in the yellow and blue car behind Nasova, and that other red and white car that is Kurt Pliskin in the Spark Boy colors this week. Andreas Laporta crashed out of yesterday's TM Europe race. He currently runs in 21st. He's uh, third in the TM Europe Championship so far. So Andreas Laporta's got something good going for him in the Blackstorm Motorsports team. And right by, and uh, going back in 24th place, we find uh, TM Lights regular Claire Alcier, the French Canadian, making her first uh, Master Cup, or making her first Master Cup start with the uh, Lynx Racing Team. Of course, this is Lynx's home race the uh, French fashion company that uh, currently owns a racing team. Uh, I don't think stranger things have happened, but anyways, Danny Savin in car number 81 is uh, lost the Independence Trophy at the uh, very end of um, the season. Of course, uh, just didn't gain enough positions in that thrilling race at uh, Vancouver. Or, oh, and we got a couple of cars off. One of them looked like Packer Carroll, and the other one looked like Mika Turbo, so we'll have to see what happens here. Turbo squeezing Packer Carroll, maybe a little contact there. Oh, Packer Carroll does not look too happy with the O2 car contact, and there they go. Oh, Mika Turvo. I don't. I think if I'm Mika Turvo, I think there's a couple of people I wouldn't really exactly want to be uh, messing around with. One of them would be the driver of that two car, but at the same time, Packer Carroll is on. Um, he does have a suspended van, but I don't think that's going. I don't think uh, just getting an active time penalty like that will be enough to see him off for. Uh, to see him off on that uh, enforced vacation. Anyway, looking back at the red five of Michael Sykes, the yellow and black 10 car is Matthias Taub of Sweden, who's lost that position to Sykesy, and then Leonid Roderick in the orange and white Volpe just right behind them. Taub having a good start to this race so far. The two Hodges Walter cars have pulled away, but I've noticed that Adrian Devereaux just is, appears to be a, a contented hang behind Luciano Savaral. I wonder if Devereaux might be just sort of saving fuel behind Savarol in order to theoretically have a uh, shorter pit stop. T the DFR boys almost contact there and the 88 car goes off the track. Comes back on. Oh, look out, look out, look out. Oh, there goes Quiggles Jr. 
and uh, everyone's favorite punching bag for this season. Ebenezer Quiggles Jr. goes off after contact with Scott Bates. Now, um, uh, Quiggles Jr. has uh, had us some very interesting radio chatter. We can't exactly play what he was saying uh, over his radio after this incident, but um, uh, active time penalty, 88 car. That, uh, well, looks like everyone makes mistakes sometimes. That's proof of it. Anyway, here's Lewis Kingston, the 17 car. A lot of damage. Uh, looks like there might be some damage to that car. Actually, uh, after having a closer look at it, I'm not so sure. But anyways, uh, Yulina Sova and Gaspar Souza going at it again for what seems like the third or fourth time already in this race. The Sova and the Souza are putting on quite a show, I should point out. The Souza opens the door. Nasova around the outside. Nasova pokes her nose in. The, so the Souza doesn't really have a whole lot of opportunity to fight that one. Ebenezer Quiggles Jr. has signaled to Packer Carroll that it's his time to enter the pit lane. Packer Carroll gives him a nudge, and Quiggles Jr. kind of slows down right in front of him. Well, um, now what <laughs> if you're Ebenezer Quiggles Jr.? Well, go around for another lap and lose even more ground. So Quiggles Jr.'s race going, uh, well, very sour very quickly. No time penalty was given to Packer Carroll for that little incident. Anyways, Arto Kekkonen, car number nine, is trying to hold off a charge from Michael Sykes and Leonid Roderick. Of course, those two are really beginning to reel in the Gessler. And Matthias Taub in the 10 car has really dropped away from this bunch. I'm kind of surprised unless Taub is uh, playing the fuel-saving game and Kekkonen is really going for it. But the Gesslers just aren't as quick as they were last year. In fact, Arto Kekkonen, by his standards, having a disastrous start to the season. Now, Kevin Dwyer and Scott Bates haven't been playing nice with each other this lap. Uh, Kevin Dwyer's taking a couple swipes at the 88 car. 88 car and trying to enter the pits this time. Signaled that he was entering. And, um, well, the 72 didn't exactly like that too much. So, uh, Scott Bates and Kevin Dwyer, not exactly on each other's mutual Christmas card lists at the moment. I don't think Scott Bates is going to be terribly happy with that. Now, what does Bates think of that? Oh, Bates gives Dwyer plenty of room to go inside of him. Uh, but Kevin Dwyer didn't take it and uh, drops back a little bit. Jack Bouvier, as I mentioned earlier, is in the third Volpe for this race. Car number 14. Right behind him is Mika Pasanen and Yulina Sova, who has gotten around Gaspar D'Souza. A lot of action early on in this race, but Jack Bouvier did very well here last year for Power Steering Incorporated, and that is why Volpe tagged him to drive this car. Ali Collada was scheduled to be in that car this uh, for this race, but Collada had uh, other commitments. Anyways... Um, Melanie Cleveno, car 12, going off the road. Oh, slow down, slow down, slow down. Oh, you've been off in that grass pit already. Well, that wasn't exact. And, well, the oil flags have come out on the racetrack, and this is why Carlos Donzel in the 03 car. And, yep, that looks like his day is done. Scott Bates in car 88 finally hits the pit lane after staying out a couple extra laps. And another car looks like he's on his way in. That would be Packer Carroll in car number 2. So, uh, anyways, Luciano Savaral is really, really flying, and he pits on lap eight. Adrian Devereaux, his teammate, does likewise. And the third place runner, Arto Kekkonen, in as well. On lap eight with Leonid Roderick in the four. And the uh, ten car of uh, Matthias Taub. Michael Sykes stay, uh, comes in as well. He uh, actually went off the track just a little bit. Matthias Taub stays out and rolls the dice, along with... Zach Duff in car 74. Um, Zach Duff has done a lot of good this season to repair his uh, somewhat tarnished image. He hasn't exactly run very well in the past couple of seasons, but uh, this year he's really turned it around. Leaving the pit lane, Chris Davenport squeezing over the uh, 17 car of Lewis Kingston, it looks like. Kingston gets hooked on the front bumper of the 22 Peter Short, and out goes Lewis Kingston. Heavy hit into the outside of turn one, and Kingston's race is over. Adrian Devereaux lost a lot of ground to Luciano Savarol because of a huge pit lane miscue. And uh, the Frenchman was furious after that one. So that's dropped him well behind Luciano Savarol. Arto Kekkonen, uh, Lena Roderick, Matthias Taub complete the top 10. Pliskin, Duff, D'Souza, Nasova, and Bouvier complete the top 10. As you see, then Ashby, Cooper, Sykes all the way back down in 13th with uh, Laporta and Henton rounding out the top 15. Bates in car 88 is a would have been in 16th, but that time penalty has dropped him a bit further down the order. Adrian Devereaux, though, in car number one, continuing to run in second and holding station there. 
We're now looking at uh, Gaspar D'Souza and Yulia Nasova as um, they continue to battle. But oh, D'Souza cut Nasova off. Big crash there as D'Souza winds up on his side. And Michael Sykes is off as well in the five car. So, drama already. As there you see, the five is off. Scott Bates. Oh, there might have been oil there for that the 88's, um, that the 88 slipped on. But D'Souza looks like he cut off the Silva. 88 car got a push start by the other track. Oh, no! The 88 car, as I mentioned, got a push start. And then the, the 18 car of Troy Adams just came flying in and hammered right into the back of him. And for that, uh, as you see right there, Chris Davenport, car number six, uh, for that little uh, pit exit fracas. He earns himself a time penalty. Davenport, car number six, has been uh, not exactly everyone. Oh, Davenport puts a couple wheels off. He's not exactly been uh, the cleanest driver this season, except during the race, but that um, didn't exactly uh, help his image any. Kurt Pliskin in the 16 car is running in sixth place, trying to do all the, all the good work that Greg Woodard was unable to do because Woodard was faster than Pliskin in all the practices, but still, both of the Lycoya interceptors were in the top ten in pretty much every session. So, uh, Lycoya clearly looking for a good result here today. Uh, Lycoya doesn't really have a presence here in, in, uh, in Europe, but uh, uh, Lennard usually takes care of that. Of course, some Lycoyas in Europe are rebadged as Lennards. Kurt Pliskin uh, sits back in sixth pl is sitting back in sixth place. Of course, there was some talk that Lennard would badge these cars for this race, but um, those rumors were clearly, clearly quashed as uh, uh, Kurt Pliskin hoping to spread the Lycoya name here in France. And uh, so far, he's doing a pretty good job of doing that in, uh, for Power Steering Incorporated. Uh, didn't exactly have a good season last year, of course, with all the turmoil with Tener, but he's turning things around here. Packer Carroll in car number two is beginning to fight his way through the field. He's got a car capable of fighting for the win, I believe, but he's deep in the field. I'd like to point out that Robert Dorian, some of you may remember him, was in the VRT pits for England, and Dorian's in the pits for this race as well. So um, I think uh, Robert Dorian kind of may be lobbying for Volpe to give him a shot in the car if anything happens with Packer Carroll's um, suspended one race ban. We'll have to see uh, what happens about that. But anyways, uh, as uh, Carroll begins to really, uh, this is really some of the best driving I've seen out of Packer Carroll. He's really uh, making some good uh, passing moves. It's just uh, too bad they don't really count for anything. Uh, as he get, goes around Scott Stoiler in car 28, Packer Carroll trying to make it claw his way through the field and negate that time penalty that he uh, earned earlier in the race. As uh, gets, And now it looks like he's chasing down, uh, yeah, that would be Alessandro Rossini in the 42 car. Packer Carroll beginning to work his way around the Tutino driver, who's had a very good season, I'd like to point out. Rossini, car number 42. And uh, we'll have to see what... Uh, the Italian is able to do. He scored quite a few uh, top 20 finishes in the points for Tutino on a number of occasions on a car that he helped design himself. So uh, very technically oriented guy is Alessandro Rossini and uh, is clearly paying off. I wonder if one of the uh, bigger teams might be looking into hiring him on uh, in the future. Ben Huron in the Huntley is currently sitting in 16th place. Uh, this is a very good run for Huntley in um, their third ever start. Uh, they uh, well, they haven't exactly had good luck in their first two events, uh, being involved in uh, quite a few mashups. But um, Ben Huron, clearly no shortage of speed with him or that race car. Um, it's a shame that uh, their num the number on that car is a little hard to read from far away, though. Here's a car that's not hard to miss. Ian is uh, uh, not hard to miss anyway. Ian Cooper, car 777. There's sarcasm there. This car is very easy to spot. And Andreas Laporta. To uh, very bright and colorful cars. Cooper having a good run in ninth. Andres Laporta sitting outside the top ten. Or rather, just in tenth place, rather, sitting inside the top ten. As uh, they're trying to hold off uh, one of the Lynx cars. That would be Davina Henton. So that's a black spoiler in that car. Didn't think I'd get the hang of uh, trying to just differentiate the Lynx cars. But anyway, Ian Cooper was really squeezing Laporta down. Oh, I don't think the... Uh, the Black Diamond, uh, the um, Black Star Motorsports uh, pit is going to be terribly happy with that maneuver. But that's what Ian Cooper's known for, not giving anyone an inch of space. And that is exactly what um, he's known for. Jacques Bouvier runs in seventh. He's been running in the Dash Cup Series for a French team, Simone Sport. Uh, we expected Simone Sport actually to, uh, to apply for the promoter's option for this race with their regular driver, Patrick Arsenault. But they did not actually do that, so Bouvier... Here with uh, Volpe, 
running in seventh place, and he's having a uh, very good run so far. Danny Salvin in car 81 is going to hit the pit lane here. It looks like, yes, Danny Salvin scheduled to pit on lap 15, and Patrick Carroll does likewise in car number two. And here is the number 114 car. We haven't really mentioned him today. Independence Trophy driver Craig Mummer, the uh, former CRL modified driver, having a very, very solid run here in 14th place. Uh, Middle Tennessee Motorsports has got a Lycoya for Mummert, and uh, there was some talk that Bolden would rejoin the series with this team, but uh, that didn't happen, unfortunately. So uh, Mummert, uh, having, still having a very strong run in uh, repairing his, uh, his image, too. And uh, Adrian Devereaux into the pits as well in car number one, so looks like we have another pit stop cycle beginning to kick off as Devereaux hits the pit lane on lap 16. Arto Kakadin, Leonard Roderick into the pit lane as well along with Matthias Taub and Kurt Pliskin who has caught the Swedish driver and uh, Ian Cooper in, Davida Henton in and uh, so is Andreas Laporta. He's having a great run by the way. Jack Bouvier is in in the 14 car. Zelda Ashby is in in the 55. Luciano Savaral did not pit that lap. He is staying on an extra lap in car number three. So Savarol having a very, very good day so far. Um, really, uh, everything really seemed to have gone his way so far. And he's led every lap from the start, and he's well on his way to a perfect 70. However, Jacques Bouvier had the best pit stop there. He sits in fifth place. Savarol leads Adrian Devereaux, Arto Kekkonen, Leonid Roderick, and Bouvier with Pliskin, Taub, uh, Ashby, Duff and uh, Henton rounding up the top 10. Great run for Duff, by the way. Whoa! Close quarters there by the Volpe mates. Uh, the big loser on that uh, round of pit stops, I do believe, was Chris Davenport in car number six, who dropped well through the field. Um, we had a time penalty anyway, but uh, that pit stop didn't exactly help his cause. So anyways, got a good battle for third. Uh, shaping up here is Matthias Taub, car number 10, as... Uh, He's trying to chase down Kurt Pliskin in the 16 car, but he's got a little ways to go. Uh, the Swedish driver, uh, been very impressive this year, uh, more so than he was last year, but uh, much fewer crashes in last season. Davina Henton running in ninth position. Of course, one last time out at Brands Hatch. It was Henton's home race, and it was a big, big boost for this team, uh, a team that... Uh, the Lynx team admitted going into the season they did not expect to fight for wins very often and did not actually expect uh, that they would get uh, a shot at winning a race that early, this early in the season. But uh, Henson putting out some great performances for this team. Melanie Klebno has as well, but Klebno just not had as good of luck as Henson has. Craig Mummert is running in 12th place, and I got to have to give Mummert his due because he's having a fantastic drive so far. His only win in a modified was at a road course, but he just kind of rather rudely shoved Peter Short off the road there almost. The four-time world champion, I think, had a uh, one-finger salute for uh, Mummert for the, after that. But anyways, Kekkonen, uh, Roderick, and Bouvier all continuing to do battle here um, on lap 20 as Roderick really defending uh, rather aggressively from his teammate, uh, from his teammate Bouvier, in car number 14. Now, uh, we could see we could see some people maybe go off cycle. Uh, we thought we would, anyways, but we haven't seen that this race, and that is what actually almost won this race for Jose Luis Martinez. And um, I'm kind of surprised no one's really done that. Anyways. As you see Bouvier clearing Leonard Roderick around the outside. Roderick had to cede the place. Roderick back down into fifth. Bouvier up into fourth. And a fantastic drive in the third Volpe. As you see, we're looking off the back of Arto Kekkonen's car as Bouvier tries to get around him. And the Finn might have to cede this place because Bouvier is absolutely flying right now in this 14 car. Bouvier really challenging. He really wants that podium place in a one-off drive for Volpe. As now, there you see Kekkonen just got it a bit sideways, and now he's going to be looking at the right side of that 14 car. Arto, very, very, very sideways coming off there. You saw how much uh, Arto Kekkonen's car was uh, sort of wiggling there, and Bouvier clears him coming up this large hill, which uh, was uh, drawn a lot of controversy in uh, the uh, two in the two years we've been here. But Bouvier really beginning to stretch away from Arto Kekkonen in car number nine, but uh, Bouvier sliding it, sliding it out just a little bit as Arto Kakinen might try to reel in the Frenchman. But we'll have to see if Bouvier 
is uh, going to be caught here by uh, Arjo Kekkonen, who uh, might have to worry about Leonid Roderick just a little bit in uh, that orange four car. Bouvier, oh, did I see something? I see May seen a puff of smoke on the back of the 14. Bouvier into the pit lane. Jack Bouvier into the pit lane. We believe there may be there may be a tire going down on the 14. Big disappointment for VRT, especially for Bouvier, who is on his way to a fantastic run. Is on his way to a fantastic finish, possibly here in this race. As Roderick begins the challenge, Arto Kakinen coming by Craig Yonser, the lap car of Craig Yonser, who's really uh, been had had an anonymous race. Coming, oh no! No, Arto Kakinen's been hit by the 89 of Yonser, and Arto Kakinen into the tires and out from third. So that's uh, two people that have inherited third place. Uh, that have gotten third place, that have just gone out of the race now. I don't know what Yonser was doing, pinching Arto Kekkonen down like that and running straight into the back of him when he's a lap down and not even close to anyone he's racing for position with. As now, Matthias Taub is the lone hope for for uh, the Gessler-Richter team. He's charging on Kurt Pliskin, uh, giving it everything he can for fourth place. Uh, the Swede really trying to get another podium result. He's had quite a few good runs this year in that uh, rather nice-looking yellow and black car as now, uh, we have some pit action here on lap 24. Roderick in, Pliskin and Taub in. Luciano Savarola has stayed out. Adrian Devereaux in on lap 24. As well, there you see, there's Luciano Savarola. Pits on lap 25. As now we have uh, just a handful of laps to go. Lean at Roderick in car number four. He's slowing. Roderick is slowing. There's smoke coming out of the back of the Volpe. Roderick is out of the race from third. On lap 27 of 30, Pliskin and Taub go by to fight over the last podium position, but gut-wrenching for the Volpe camp. They could have had so much out of today. Kurt Pliskin now sits in third. Matthias Taub giving chase in that 10 car. The Gessler team, uh, they did, they really are rolling. They really rolled the dice on strategy early in the race, but now Matthias Taub giving it everything he can to try to get a podium for Gessler as we ride on board with Matthias Taub. As you can see, he's a little closer to Kurt Pliskin. The adjustments that Taub's team has made to his car appear to really be working because now you can see he's really closing the gap on Kurt Pliskin in the 16 car. And this is for third place. Uh, Adrian Devereaux and Luciano Savarol are a long distance away from each other and a long way ahead of this battle as well. Taub and Pliskin as they come down and take two laps to go. Two laps to go this time by as now Taub trying to close in Kurt Pliskin down this long straightaway. Staying tucked in behind him as, as close as he can to get the most out of the draft that he gets from the front straightaway. Taub sticking his nose in to try to make a move in turn one. This is going to be a big move if he makes it stick. Pliskin gives him room as now they're side by side coming down the straightaway into turn two. We've had a lot of incidents over down there at that part of the track. We'll see if Pliskin and Taub play nice with each other over here. Side by side though. Taub and Pliskin giving no quarter now as they come here. Pliskin runs Taub off just a little bit and Taub into the grass coming back on track and just misses the American. Kurt Pliskin very determined to keep Matthias Taub at bay. He doesn't have a whole lot of time to do that and he's giving it everything he's got for this final podium position. The Swedish driver Taub really beginning to harry Pliskin now. He's all over the back of the 16 car like a bad smell as he sticks his nose in at the last minute. Matthias Taub takes Pliskin by surprise. I don't think Pliskin saw that move coming, and Taub is gonna look like he's gonna be able to make it stick coming out of the final chicane. No, Pliskin fights back as Pliskin's able to hold on for now. In that car 16, they touch. Coming down the main straightaway, Matthias Taub really wants third very badly as now they're coming to take the white flag. Matthias Taub and Kurt Pliskin down to turn one, but this time Taub seems to have the advantage here. And Matthias Taub trying to clear Pliskin coming off of the first corner, and he's able to do that. Matthias Taub takes third in a pretty good battle there with Pliskin, but now we're back up here with Luciano Savarol, who has controlled this race for, uh, ever since the drop of the green flag. It's been a serene drive, I think is the best word to say it, as he comes to lap Packer Carroll, who's running in uh, 25th place. Just a couple of corners to go for Luciano Savarol to claim his first win of the season. No! He's made contact with the lap car of Packer Carroll and Savarol on the last lap into the tires. That's the second time that's happened to him this season. And both instances were contact with the Volpe. Carroll was way down in 25th place, squeezed down Savarol, and just ran him right off the road. I don't think anything that uh, Packer Carroll's team can come up with 
is going to save him from being uh, handed that one race ban because uh, that was just ridiculous. I don't know why. Packer Carroll just turned right into the back of the three car of Savaral. Just turned into the race leader, really. Uh, I don't know if Packer Carroll wasn't paying attention or what, but either way, that's handed Adrian Devereaux the lead of the race. Uh, on the last lap, a lead that uh, I don't think Devereaux would have had uh, otherwise, frankly, because Devereaux was a long ways back from Savaral, about 12 seconds behind. But needless to say, this is going to... Um, I think this might... Uh, uh, get a whole bit, a little, little bit of sympathy from the uh, for Packer Carroll from the home crowd because Adrian Devereaux just got a couple more corners to go to claim his second win of the year as Adrian Devereaux fight, uh, wins in his home race. Devereaux claims the victory at the Round of France. He only led one lap and that was the most important one. Unfortunately, uh, at his teammate's expense. Matthias Taub, that battle with Kurt Pliskin turned out to be for second place, and Taub beat Pliskin back to the line. Davina Henton, another strong run for the Lynx team. And Zelda Ashby rounds out the top five. Andreas Laporta, Ian Cooper, Craig Mummert, great run for him. And Ben Huron, first top ten for Huntley. And also, I do believe the first time Huntley has made it to the checkered flag. Jacques Bouvier completes the top ten. Mika Passanen, Peter Short, Zach Duff, Claire Aussier, all had quiet but respectable runs today. Another double points finish for Tutino. Uh, good effort by that uh, very small outfit there. Ben Atkins leading home Rossini to the line. And Melanie Clevno gets a point only because Chris Davenport was handed a time penalty midway through the race. Davenport would have been 17th. And here's how the Drivers' Championship looks after five races with Devereaux extending his championship lead over Davina Henton, who's had a surprisingly strong start to the year in the Lynx Racing 11 car. Michael Sykes, Matthias Taub, Zelda Ashby in the top five in the championship for FPO. That is another new team to the series as well, so great start to the year by Ashby. Jasper D'Souza, Arto Kakinen, and Yulia Nasova, Kurt Pliskin, and Ebenezer Quiggles Jr. round out the top ten. Ebenezer Quiggles Jr. is continually showing that his form in Arlo is no fluke. Scott Bates, Leonard Roderick, Luciano Savaral could use a little bit more, uh, well, uh, consistency, I do believe, is the word I'm looking for. Uh, Scott Bates is two top fives, but he's also failed to uh, make it to the flag on two occasions so far this year. Leonard Roderick's only top ten was his win at Carbondale, and Luciano Savaral has three DNFs in two polls, so, uh, I think he could be looking to turn that around. He certainly looked like he had this one in the bag. Melanie Klebno, of course. Um, Melanie Klebno's results, I don't think, exactly show how well she's done this year. Zach Duff uh, is kind of in the same boat. And then, of course, you go further down. Ike Durbin still in the top 20 in the championship as an independent trophy contender. Peter Short, Troy Adams have been fairly anonymous this season, but they've been relatively solid. So I think uh, a shout-out needs to be given to both of them. And Lewis Kingston, who has three DNFs, Still has a, a couple of very strong runs to his name. Kevin Dwyer completes the top 20 in the championship. One quick look at the Independence Trophy shows that Ben Huron is really closing the gap to Ike Durbin, and Craig Yonser is as well. However, Huron has only run two races, whereas Ike Durbin has run three. 21 of the 27 cars have started the Independence Trophy, Carlos Sanzello being last in the Independence Trophy with only 32 points. Round 6 of the 2013 TM Master Cup Series season will take place in Gothenburg, Sweden. Matthias Taub is the defending race winner and fan favorite. Perhaps most importantly, it is the last race before the biggest race of the calendar, the Karyala Grand Prix.